Bioshock. Big daddies, little demons, crackheads, all living peacefully in an underwater city. City at the bottom of the ocean. Ridiculous. Butcher, can you shut the f What's going on, everybody? It's Jay, and I've been feeling really nostalgic recently. I've been getting that itch to crash back into the city of Rapture because it's honestly been way too long since I've replayed the absolute banger that is Bioshock 1. I played Bioshock 1 when I was a kid. I didn't actually play the full game right away, though. I first played the demo off the PlayStation Store, and that's when I first fell in love with Bioshock. I loved it so much that I went to my local GameStop with my grandma to get the full version, but then something happened. The douchebag employee began to read the back of the box. Ma'am, this game has blood, gore, drug reference, intense violence, and the worst two words that could have came out of his mouth. Sexual themes. <gasps> Yeah, my grandmother was pissed, dude. It's pretty obvious that I didn't get Bioshock that day, but me and my dad went back later and got the goods. It's pretty crazy how that memory is literally ingrained in my brain. I was pretty obsessed with Bioshock as a kid, though, and it was all due to this one aspect of the game that I never really appreciated until I grew older, and that's Bioshock's atmosphere. Bioshock 1 had such an engrossing atmosphere when I first experienced it, and after replaying it again for the first time in a while, I can say without a shadow of doubt that it still, more than 15 years later, has one of the best atmospheres in all of gaming. Bioshock's atmosphere absolutely stands the test of time, and today I want to talk about why Bioshock's atmosphere is so important. Let's start with the beginning of Bioshock because it's honestly super captivating with the way that the game opens. All you get is this quick cutscene on a plane that doesn't really answer any questions. If anything, it gets you to start asking more of them. And the next thing you know, you're drowning in the ocean after a pretty intense plane crash, and the only thing in sight after you swim up to the surface is this massive lighthouse. Pretty lucky RNG, am I right? And this is where Bioshock really starts to pull you in, and and that pull only gets stronger the more you commit yourself to the game. So you enter the lighthouse because you're literally stranded in the ocean and curiosity is getting to the better of you. You're greeted with this beautifully inviting architecture inside the lighthouse and huh? What? A submarine? Well, where else am I gonna go? So you hop on in the submarine and then your journey into Rapture begins. I chose the impossible. I chose Rapture. Man, Bioshock's intro is literally so perfect. I will never forget the feeling of taking that submarine down to the ocean and seeing the underwater city of Rapture for the first time. It's so beautifully gripping, and the music during the scene is just, ha huh? One of my favorite aspects of Bioshock's intro is you're first greeted with Rapture's beauty as you slowly make your way into the city. And as soon as you make your entrance into Rapture, the tone immediately shifts into horror as you see the rundown insides of the city and literally watch a splicer kill someone right in front of you. I just really love the way Bioshock shows you two sides of a coins, starting with Rapture's outward beauty and then shifts to the horrors held within. It's honestly so well done in my opinion, and it really sets you up for the rest of the game as you meet your only companion, Atlas, over the radio in this scene, and you're gonna need his help as you and Atlas both try to survive this dangerous new world. Just a quick heads up, I'm not gonna be talking super in depth about the story, but we are gonna have some major spoilers in this video, so I thought I'd just let you guys know. But anyway, in Bioshock, the one thing you can immediately appreciate right away is the game's art style. It's aged so damn well. Rapture is beautiful from the moment you first see it, and it stays that way even though there's crackheads literally killing each other everywhere, and the city's basically falling apart, but it's so cool going from area to area and peeking out each window, seeing the depths of the ocean and the lights from the surrounding buildings of Rapture. It becomes really immersive exploring the torn apart interior of the city as well, and imagining what once was. Rapture is falling apart due to its civil war between its founder Andrew Ryan and the con man Fontaine, and on top of that its citizens have gone practically nuts due to the use of plasmids and atoms. But the fact that Rapture is falling apart makes you ask more questions about not only what happened to this once flourishing city, but what will happen. You never really feel safe in Rapture due to the constant threat of splicers or big daddies. The enemies in Bioshock really help add more to the game's world because they're all so well designed and fit perfectly with the game's setting. Splicers are remnants of Rapture's population that have been corrupted by their use of Atom. And if you don't know what Atom is, it's basically this genetic altering substance that is used to create plasmids, which are these super sweet powers that you'll get while you're playing throughout the game. The first plasma you'll get is Electro Bolt, which lets you wield the power of electricity. And the cutscene when you first take this plasmid will forever live rent free in my head. Uh, oh. Daddy, now. Your genetic code is being rewritten. There's nothing like injecting some weird looking substance at the bottom of the ocean, you know? Even the overall design of the plasmids, like the actual abilities, and also the plasmid vending machines that are scattered throughout Rapture, really help bring this world to life too. Seriously though, everything about Bioshock's art design is just so well done. And the game still looks great today because of just how beautifully stylized everything is. I just love it, man. I really do. Perfect. Everything. Down to the last 
minute details. To add to the game's horror, you'll encounter these enemies known as Big Daddies, who literally have a fucking drill as a hand. Big Daddies are pretty iconic, to be honest. I mean, they're literally on the cover art of the game. But these spooky boys will be scattered throughout each level, protecting these weird-looking children known as Little Sisters. These Little Sisters are just basically a way to obtain the Atom currency. You see, when you're playing Bioshock, you'll need upgrades and more plasmids in order to survive the brutal world of Rapture. And in order to get these upgrades, you'll need Atom. And you know who has a bunch of Atom? You guessed it, these little fucking demon children. When you pick them up, you can either harvest them for a bunch of atom, or you can cure them and get less atom, but you won't feel like a piece of shit like you would if you did harvest them. Or I don't know, maybe you have no empathy for these little heathens, and for that, I can't blame you. And if you don't know already, there's a catch to this entire situation. That is, you gotta fight the big boys in order to have the opportunity to harvest these little sisters, because they act as their protectors in the world of Rapture. And fighting the big daddies is honestly super intense, but it can also be really fun too. While I was replaying the game this quickly became one of my favorite aspects of the gameplay. I really enjoy trying to take out the big daddies as efficiently as possible. And I really love how intense fighting them is, and it makes the whole experience really rewarding. It feels really good getting your atom when you just went through hell and back in order to obtain it. Bioshock does a really good job with making atom feel like the powerful substance that practically ruined the city. Gameplay wise, if you have more atom, the more powerful you'll end up being, whether you're upgrading existing plasmids, getting different ones, or even increasing your overall health. Even though Bioshock's gameplay feels feels pretty clunky these days, learning how to use the right plasmids in the right situations still feels really rewarding, especially with all the different combinations that are at your disposal. Another thing worth mentioning about Bioshock's gameplay is the resource management. Resources are really hard to come by, and while you'll have a bunch of weapons and plasmids to use, you'll have to be very careful with how you use them, because you can really quickly run out of ammo or mana to use your plasmids. I found myself having to strategize when fighting most enemies, especially big daddies. I had to think about the best ways to conserve as much ammo as possible during combat encounters. I really liked using the crossbow to set up traps and try to lure my enemies into them. You can't really mindlessly run and gun your way through Bioshock because you're going to run out of resources really quickly. You're going to be looting for ammo and money often. There are a bunch of vending machines where you can buy ammo and other resources, but money is also something that is really hard to come by. I think this type of resource management really works in Bioshock's favor because it adds a whole nother layer of intensity to the gameplay and atmosphere. Another one of the biggest aspects of the game that really impacts Bioshock's atmosphere is the overall main story and how that main story is told. There aren't many cutscenes and most of your interactions with friendly NPCs are through closed doors or talking to them over your radio. And I think this is super beneficial to the overall feel of the game. It coincides so well with Bioshock's atmosphere because it really makes you feel isolated and alone when your only form of interaction is through windows or your radio. I've seen a lot of people say that as a player we're experiencing the world just as much as the main character is too. The entire game we have questions and there's just so much mystery. We only know as much as our character knows and I think this makes it really easy to put yourself in the shoes of the main character Jack. If you made it this far in the video then you most likely already know the huge twist that happens in Bioshock where you find out your only companion Atlas is actually Fontaine. Fontaine is this terrible con man who you've been hearing all about throughout your entire journey in Rapture so far. And before the huge twist Fontaine tasked you to kill the founder of Rapture Andrew Ryan. Andrew Ryan has been trying to kill you all throughout the game and when you find finally get to him, he spills the ultimate truth, that you are the product of an experiment that took place in the city only a few years back. You're a tool that can be tasked to do anything with the simple phrase, would you kindly. And Fontaine, who's been disguised as Atlas, has been the one controlling you this entire time. Would you kindly? Would you kindly get this? Would you kindly find that? Would you kindly find that? Would you kindly find that? Would you kindly get this? Would you kindly head to Ryan's office and kill the son of a bitch? Would you kindly? The phrase that all Bioshock lovers will never forget. This twist is so crazy good, and this twist really takes advantage of the fact that Bioshock is a video game. You as a player are tasked to complete objectives with, would you kindly do this? Would you kindly do that? So when you finally get to Andrew Ryan and find out the truth, it has such a huge shock factor, and it's a twist that is so highly regarded in gaming, and rightfully so. Literally every single aspect of Bioshock really comes together to create one of the most immersive atmospheres in all of gaming. Everything from the art style to the story, Really brings the world of Rapture to life, and it's so easy to immerse yourself in the world due to the beautifully composed soundtrack, complementing each scene and environment perfectly. All of that being strung together by the overall story that goes so well with what you're experiencing as a player. Bioshock is a perfect example of why atmosphere is so important in gaming. I love
love Bioshock 2 and Bioshock Infinite, but none of them can really compare to Bioshock 1 in my opinion. Bioshock 2 takes away the experience of never feeling safe because you're literally one of the strongest enemies in Rapture because you play as a big daddy. And Bioshock Infinite is beautiful, but it doesn't have the spooky environments that you would find all throughout Rapture. It's also a lot more cinematic, which is totally fine, but I definitely prefer the storytelling of the first game. Nonetheless, in today's gaming climate, it can be really hard to find games that have such an immersive atmosphere like the one found in Bioshock 1. With all that being said though, I would kill for another Bioshock game. I know there's one currently in the works, but if I'm being honest, I'm more excited to see what the head director Ken Levine does with his new game Judas. Ken Levine was the head of Irrational Games that created the original Bioshock series, just in case you didn't know. But overall, Judas is looking pretty sweet, so I'm excited to see what they do with this new IP. With that being said though, I think it's a great place to call the video. Hopefully you enjoyed. And let me know what you guys think about Bioshock in the comments. I'm curious about what your history is. What's your favorite part of the atmosphere or the story? Do you like Bioshock's twist? But anyways, I'll talk to you guys soon and see you in the next video. Peace.